the girl didn't know what it was, so I didn't tell her. And I was like, damn, this is nice. I just sat there. I was like, but there's it's really- like, It's like a G feeling. Yes, it's so good. I know. <laughs> So Ibogain says, both of you, what is your go-to order from Chipotle? I'm gonna let you answer first. I have a oh, that's a good one. So yeah, I get the I get the double rice, double white rice, double steak, uh, guacamole, fajitas, uh, a little bit of mild salsa, a little bit of lettuce, um, and that's it. Okay, so first of all, I've been to Chipotle once, I think, in college. I was that's seduced. It? I was seduced by an Asian woman who took me into the Chipotle once by accident, and I, I it was actually good. But let me tell you my experience lately with Mexican food. So two days ago, my wife and I we wanted to order something. She's pregnant. She keeps you know doing this stuff. So we ordered from a taqueria around us. Turns out, man, this burrito and taco, I never tasted anything like it in my life. I was like, holy crap. It was so good. We couldn't handle it. We were like, this is the best food we've ever tasted. We want to move to Mexico. Then I, I told her we should move to Mexico. Then she's like, Mexican food isn't like this. This is just the taqueria here. So I was like, all right. So we ordered the next day. Comes back. Horrible. Horrible, completely different food. Like, what the hell? I found the best food the ever. Same place, though? Same place. The difference was the first day I picked it up in person, the second day I, de- I ordered delivery. Oh, delivery is always, always worse. But if you're trying to eat Mexican food, man, there's a couple of taco places. There was one next to me downtown. You know, I used to live down. Do you know the Whole Foods downtown? Is, is it a taco trap that you guys went to? No, no, no. It's like a, a taco place, like a fancy one in Irvine. But, but do you know the Whole Foods downtown in L.A.? I've seen it, yes. I bet. Yeah, I've, I've never been there though. I used to live above the Whole Foods for you five. Told me, you told me about that story where that bum tried to get you. Yeah, the bum tried to get me, but there's also a taco place there too, which was awesome. I went there a couple of times. Then what did they do? Cut the portions in half and double the prices. Every time I get a good taco, something goes off on me. Dude, I, I used to. I I went to a bodybuilding show in Culver City one time, and me and my buddies, we all went to this place, this this Mexican place, and it was in a tent, a fucking tent, dude. It was the best Mexican I ever had. And then I was in Stockton, California with my with my buddy who's a bodybuilder. And we went to the taco trucks down there in the ghetto. And it was some of the best tacos I've ever had. That's the thing. Those taco trucks are no joke. But you got to know which one to go to. Yeah. By the way, I actually met a guy who his name is Culver. And he's the grandson of the guy who Culver City is named after. Really? I actually met. Yeah. And. A funny other thing about Culver City. Did you know that Culver City has gangs in it and a hood? Yeah, it was the the. I wouldn't doubt it because that shit was ghetto. Like where they had the bodybuilding shows was hood. It is hood. There's Culver City dress. I met a guy once there. He had Culver written here, city, and then thirteen under it. His whole chest was set. <laughs> Culver City. What the hell is that? Because for the guys that are not from LA, Culver City is right next to Venice and Santa Monica. You wouldn't think that there's like gangs there. Anyway, you know, there's a place in Culver City that I used to go to eat after like prejudge. It was called Fat Burger. Do you remember that place? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fat Burger is good. Oh yeah, it was hella good. Yeah. All right. So uh Golden Gym Aesthetic Physique says, What would Boston's insulin protocol look like focusing on ma- I've never heard this before from you, by the way. Focusing on maximal growth. Once per week, a high dose of Lantus with lagging body parts or pre and post workout with fast tracking insulin. I don't remember what's your your Oh, I also want to ask you another thing. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, how do you use insulin? How, no, how would you no. use insulin if you weren't worried about health is what I mean. Okay, so if I wasn't worried about health, I, I, I like I like Novel R with your pre-workout meal 90 minutes prior. And how would you avoid it, like adaptation? Would you do it like every other day? or? That's the problem, dude, is I used to use way too much insulin. I used to use it every day, and you literally lose effects from it. Like you literally – don't feel anything your blood sugar doesn't even drop so yesterday i used insulin right post-workout six units six fucking units of humalog and i ate and i ate 80 grams of carbohydrates and an hour later i was hypo and i and i had to eat again isn't that crazy now if i did six units every day dude it wouldn't even touch my blood sugar i wouldn't even i could literally shoot six units and not even eat at all and i wouldn't even go hypo so um, my favorite protocol man is honestly if I had to say uh, all in one, obviously this is different. I like Novalin R, which is the same as Humalin R with your pre-workout meal. And I'm not going to say doses because it all depends on the person, and, you know, how much you're doing. But Novalin R pre-workout meal, train 90 minutes later with a Gatorade or an intra-workout carb, and then post-workout Humalog. 
So, have you ever gone hypo and it felt good? Like, like you feel a little like, bit like, like you feel eurofic. Yeah, eurofic exactly. <laughs> okay, we got to make that hat though. Seriously, the, the eurofic was just for fun, not to make money. It's just, I don't what, okay, but but no, honestly, the, the one time I went really hypo, I was with a, a I had a chick in my apartment. I, I I had been shooting insulin for like a few days. My insulin sensitivity is is messed up. If I shoot five five units one day, the next day I don't even need to eat shooting five units. Like nothing happens. So I was probably shooting 15 units through a couple, three days later. And I went hypo and I was like dizzy. The girl didn't know what it was, so I didn't tell her. And I was like, damn, this is nice. I just sat there. I was like, but there's it's really- like, It's like a GHB feeling. Yes, it's so good. I know. <laughs> okay, nobody try that at home, seriously. But, but hey, I'll tell you what, if you ever want to get that feeling, but not like fully go hypo, well, I used to IV my Noblin R. And right when you IV it, you get that feeling. It's a really nice feeling. It's like a head rush. Yeah, yeah, but then but then if you let it go too long, you start sweating and shit. I know. Then it gets then it gets a little freaky. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened to me at the end. I ate. But listen, I want to ask you something. I've always wondered this about Chris Aceto. I heard that Jay Cutler, and this may be completely wrong, by the way, so you correct me. But I heard that Jay Cutler and Chris were fans of thyroid in the off season. Have you ever heard that? I, I can't I can't speak on that, but I, I'll tell you right right now that Milo Sarsev loves to run high doses of thyroid all the time oh yeah so how do people what do people do with thyroid in the off season the people that like to run it like milos so, milos i've seen his protocols it's 25 t3 like the whole time while they're on heavy insulin with no t4 just t3 i've like, seen sorry. his protocols i don't remember seeing t4 i just remember seeing t3 yeah what do you think about it for some do you do it like if somebody was a fat guy you would do it but if, if somebody's not fat do you think it's counterproductive i would never do it i would just adjust the diet if they're gaining fat that means you're eating too much i, I wouldn't counteract it with thyroid because then i would think uh doing thyroid like that would actually inhibit muscle and it would keep you from growing that's what i would think i was that's i heard some stupid rumor maybe it's totally wrong Chris, that, i don't know what people's do that you just eat less like if you're getting fat don't just add thyroid to counter out the fat you know that doesn't make sense that's what i was trying to figure out i was wondering if there was some secret there where adding the thyroid now, made... if your thyroid on blood works low i think that's a good idea yeah yeah and then you have serious you might have issues specifically just for the audience to know if your tsh is high it may be dangerous so you may right. want to add t4 and maybe a bit of t3 and t4 won't all convert to t3 so you have to add a bit more t3 okay so uh Better butts by putts says who should use Prammy and benefits for bodybuilders. Um, I mean, this is a simple. Actually, we're gonna ask this question on Derek's podcast later. I'll go more into it, but just I wanted to tell the audience: don't use cabergoline. Cabergoline is associated with heart fibrosis at high doses when given to Parkinson's disease people. Prammy is not. So Prammy is the safer one. You, of course, you're using low doses, so it's not so dangerous. But if you're gonna use one, Prammy. The other thing I want to tell you guys is. You don't have to use Prami or Caber. What Prami and Caber are for are for people who don't have dopamine in their bodies, for people with Parkinson's disease. Now, you have dopamine. So if you want to lower your prolactin for sex drive or something else, you could use some Adderall. You could use some Wellbutrin. It'll take a little bit longer, but at least you'll get some work out of it, some happiness. You, there's lighter approaches. When you use a dopamine agonist, all your dopamine receptors will downregulate, and you'll get nothing out of it. The problem with like things like Prammy and Caber is that they can make you feel like shit. Like they make you, if you take too much, they make you feel way too tired. They make you feel unmotivated. Like, like the, yeah. So that's the downregulation, bro. That's how the receptors and you don't ever want your dopamine receptors downregulate. Yeah. So like in the off season, like, okay, if somebody's getting prolactin side effects on like low doses, I'll add in some Caber or some Prammy. Um, I don't, I don't trust the liquid Prammy, so I always have them get the tabs, and I have them just take 125 MCGs. But um, pre-contest, I think I like to use it the last four weeks because it does dry people out. It does, for sure. It'll dry them out 100%. Really? Yeah, because if, if their prolactin's high, they, they definitely show signs of, of you know, makes, water retention. That makes sense. And by the way, just for the audience to know, your estrogen and progesterone, when they raise up, prolactin does too. So one way also is to keep your estrogen low. And you could, if you wanted, block pro, block, block uh, progesterone. But if you did that, the DECA and, and, and Trembolone and Anadrol won't work as well. So you can't really do that, but you can lower your estrogen. Sorry, I have this ridiculous hand, guys. <laughs>